Okay, welcome to the show, Central Pennsylvania. You are listening to Creating Wealth Through Real Estate, and I'm super excited about today's show. We've got a guest who I've known for quite a while today. He's really kicking butt down south, uh, not necessarily down south, but in the Maryland area, uh, Baltimore, D.C., Virginia area. And it happens to be this guy actually runs, I just found this out before the interview today, he actually runs the fifth largest real estate investing meetup group in the country. Uh, he told me they've got over 2,000 active members. And I got to tell you, running the local real estate investing club, uh, we thought we were really doing something with 500 members. So to think that our guest today uh, is running an organization with over 2,000 real estate investors united in the Baltimore, D.C., Virginia region, I think is absolutely phenomenal. So stay tuned to the whole show. And I have uh, gotten him to agree to give everybody listening to this show today some free bonuses relating to real estate investing, marketing, and all type of types of other great stuff that I think can bring immense value to your real estate investing endeavors. So before we get rolling today, I just wanted to remind if this is your first time listening to the show, if you're driving in the car hearing me for the first time, my name is Zach Wiest and I'm the CEO of padeals.com. We are a local residential real estate investment firm here in the Harrisburg area, and we really specialize in helping serious individuals diversify their capital into income producing real estate that is well located and quality built. And we've had a lot of success with that over the years, but if you're kind of on the fence and just trying to make a decision as to whether or not to invest or not, uh, or you'd just like to get some more information on our particular area as a whole, then I want you to go to padealsradio.com. Again, that website is padealsradio.com. And on that site, you're going to be able to download absolutely free about a 50-page special report that we wrote on investing in real estate in central Pennsylvania. So friends, people can give you insight into investing in real estate nationally, which is good information for the most part, but when you can get information that's specifically geared towards your exact area, then it's much more meaningful than something that's done on a national basis. And this special report that you can download at padealsradio.com was written with central Pennsylvania's in mind. So we've got uh, you know statistics on local area data. We've got statistics on how the market cycles have gone over the last 34 years here in central PA. And we even highlight some of the hot spots in our area that you can make the most money and generate the most cash flow by buying in these areas. So get the report. It's at padealsradio.com, padealsradio.com. All right, well, I want to jump right into uh, our interview today because we are limited on time and we've got a lot of content to cover. Uh, from what I understand, this gentleman is really, really kicking some butt down south uh, in the Baltimore, D.C., Virginia area. And his name is Charles Blair. I met Charles years ago. Uh, they actually call him the mad scientist down, down in the Baltimore area. And uh, one of the most well-respected investors down in that area. And from my understanding and what I've seen from him, he is also a marketing genius, uh, which for anyone that knows me, I am a student of marketing. Uh, I attribute most of my success to good marketing and marketing techniques that I've learned over the years. And I'm really excited to hear what Charles Blair has to share with us. So Charles, without further ado, are you there, my friend? Zach, I am, and thank you very much. I really appreciate the time and the act opportunity to speak to you and your listeners. Hey, I appreciate you uh, setting some time for, away from your busy schedule to be with us today, so it is greatly appreciated. So, Charles, just so everyone, so we can kind of frame the conversation for today and so everyone has a little bit of insight about who you are and what you're about, can you just give us your, your first couple of years in the business or actually, you know, what how you got into the business, what you did, and where you're at today? Yeah, absolutely. Um, I didn't have one of the best starts in this business to begin with. Um, um, you're talking to someone who basically dropped out of junior high school. I have a ninth grade dropout. I'm um, a ninth grade dropout, to, 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 to be lack of a better word. Um, so my start was a little bit, should I say, slow to begin with. Okay. And one of the things I was doing early on in life was, and this is one of my dead-end jobs because I had a lot of them when I first started out, was selling Kirby vacuum cleaners. Wow, okay. So I used to go around um, west in the uh, West Baltimore area and knock on doors and try to sell a $1,400 vacuum cleaner. <laughs> and unfortunately, I wasn't able to sell anything. 
Okay. But one of the things that I did that really took up a lot of my time was the fact that we worked late at night. And guess what came on TV late at night? Let me Call guess. Seats, no money down, of course. I was there with you 15 years ago, brother. Yeah, so I, I grabbed that call to sheets for us, and I'm just like most everyone else, I purchased that course three different times. Wow. And the third time, I actually took it out of the package. Exactly. And from that point on, my love and desire for real estate really grew. One of the things I realized early on that I need to find a mentor, a mentor somebody that was actually doing this business, and somebody that actually that could teach me this business. So I started working with a guy here in Baltimore. My salary was $50 a week. And I worked with him for eight months underneath those terms, $50 oh. a week. Just teach me everything you know. The good part is, after eight months of working with him, I've been a full-time investor now for over 26 years. Wow. Um, I've done every type of deal from commercial investing. At one point, I used to be the largest owner of commercial investment properties in downtown Baltimore. I used to own 347 units. I have 25 different buildings in downtown Baltimore on the commercial side. Wow. On the residential side, I've done everything from wholesaling. Uh, short sales, uh, rehabbing. Um, one of my companies was Win Win Property Solutions. Me and my partner Rob Bostic had that company for a number of years. We we're averaging we we're averaging anywhere between 150 to 200 deals a year, constantly for another five years. We were in business. Wow. So I have a lot of experience in the business, but my love for the business really accelerated on the marketing side. Because once I really got the understanding of how that lead generation side, how that marketing side is really the key to your success in this business, then I really, really started getting a passion for marketing. And for the last four or five years, it's been strictly um, contoning my craft with the real estate side, but also building my marketing um, expertise, working with other investors all around the country, helping them grow their business and so on. Yeah, and I think you're doing a terrific job, Charles. I, I can't really get through life longer than about a week without your name coming up in some real estate investing circle or marketing circle. So whatever you're doing, keep doing it. It is working well. So let me ask you, Charles, you got it. Uh, let me ask you, you know, you and I have been around now for longer than most people in this industry are. There's a lot of people just entering the market due to the Great Recession and, and it being, you know, one of the most opportune times to enter the business. But you and I have been around for a long time. So we've seen several market cycles come and go. We've seen good times and bad times. We've seen where everything you touch turned to gold and then you couldn't sell anything or you couldn't give real estate away back in 2009, 2010. So let me ask you, I mean, what have you really seen change within the landscape of real estate investing over the last five, six, or seven years? People entering the business today, you know, what what's different about real estate today versus, say, 2006? That's an easy question to answer. Technology. Technology today is being more embraced for the growth of most businesses now. 2006, it was an infancy. It was a situation where people knew about websites, they knew about screen stages, they knew about Craigslist, they knew about this and that, but they just didn't really embrace it. And now I see that people are building their businesses around the technology first, but then the traditional um, marketing strategies or traditional ways in which to do business secondarily. That's the biggest change I see right now, Zach, is the adaptation and the acceptance of technology to grow your business. You know, I think it's it's that is just such a great answer because it's so, so true. I can remember in 2003 here in Harrisburg being the only guy on Craigslist under the real estate section. I mean, I was it. It was mm -hmm. me and maybe, maybe if they if I were lucky, there was one other guy. But uh, nowadays you go to Craigslist and there's hundreds and hundreds of posts. Can you be any more specific when it comes to technology, though? Are you talk? Are, are we talking about like marketing automation? Are we talking about customer relationship management? Are you really talking about the entire uh, technology, you know, world with regard to just systematizing essentially everything that we do as real estate investors nowadays? You just hit the nail right on the head, the last part you just made, the systematizing of the complete business system of the investor from the follow-up process to the actual um, direct mail marketing process and also through the whole business and branding of that company. A lot of people now are going beyond the traditional we buy houses niche, and I think that's one of the key points to what's going to happen in the future. It's not because you know and I know, Zach, very well that we don't have a good reputation in a lot of circles. Right. We and are. I think that that, 
I was going to say, a lot of us are considered like the used car salesmen of real estate. Exactly. We've gotten a bad name over the years. Exactly. And I think that what's, what's the next evolution of our industry is to take us from that, just like you just said, that used car mentality to that respected business owner. And I think that's going to be the gravitation in which we're going to move forward over the next century or so in real estate investing, because we have to make some changes. There's a lot of going on in our business, and you know the ones I'm talking about, the ones that are out there selling magic red pills and so on, yep. that is just basically giving us the, what I like to call the gurus, the people that are actually doing what they teach as opposed to just teaching what to do. The do rules are going to be the ones that's really going to take this to the next level, such as yourself, showing people what's working in their region, what's working now, and so on. Absolutely. Absolutely. Charles, awesome content so far. Friends, you're listening to Creating Wealth Through Real Estate. I'm your host, Zach Wiest. The station is WHP 580, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, guys. I am your host, Zach Wiest. The show is Creating Wealth Through Real Estate. And to my knowledge, we are the only real estate investing-based talk radio show in central Pennsylvania, and I'm pretty proud of that, uh, proud to be able to bring you relevant, timely content on a weekly basis to hopefully help you become a better real estate investor. And that's exactly what we're doing today. We are interviewing a superstar real estate investor and marketer based out of the Baltimore, D.C. region. His name is Charles Blair. And I want you guys to stay tuned for the entire show because at the end of today's show, Charles is going to give everyone still listening access to some really cool, uh, really meaningful and valuable bonuses that I think can help everyone listening. So before we left, uh, Charles was sharing with us you know, what we talked about was the biggest change within the real estate investing industry since, say, uh, 2005, 2006, up till present day, is really the reality of what technology has brought to the table. So technology has really made everything we do a little easier, a little more efficient, a little more effective. And uh, Charles just happens to be a master at a lot of this, this technical stuff that I'm really not that good at. Uh, and what we're going to do for the remainder of the show, friends, is we're really going to dig into some details about Internet trends and direct mail trends and maybe some stuff that's above some of these listeners' heads. And if that's you out there, I don't want you to be you know, nervous or worried that you don't understand the concepts or the or the acronyms we use or what have you. Uh, if you don't get it, you know, this recording is available on a podcast every week at whp580.com and go back, listen to it and Google any search terms that you don't recognize or any strategies or techniques we talk about that you're not familiar with. Go ahead and play the podcast back, Google what we were talking about, and you'll be that much more educated rather than just saying, oh, I didn't understand that next. So uh, we're going to talk about some great stuff, and I just don't want it to be over anybody's head. So, Charles, let's get right back into it. Uh, let me ask you a question. What do you think, you know, it, it is a different world. I mean, it's truly a different world from when you got started 26 years ago. It's definitely a different world from when I got started 15 years ago. Uh, you run one of the largest real estate investing clubs down in, down in that region. What do you see that's really working well in today's new economy with your members or even for your own personal investing endeavors? There's, I think there's really three areas that I can easily point out, one of which is going to be old school. I think no matter where you are in real estate investing, direct mail marketing should be an aspect of every part of your business. So for number one, that would be direct mail marketing. Uh, for number two, it would be organic and what I like to call searches and optimization type of marketing, such as ranking your website, and also SEM, which is search engine marketing, such as Craigslist postings and so on. And number three, and I think, Zach, this is pretty much one of the biggest changes that I've seen in this industry, is the adaptation of working with virtual assistants and online help, such as um, uh, outsourcers and so on from around the country to help stabilize and systematize your business. I think those right there are the three biggest trends, or should I say one or two of the three biggest trends, because direct mail marketing has been around for years. Yeah, and, and for those of you listening, I mean, just please write down what Charles just said to you. He talked about SEO or search engine optimization. He talked about direct mail, and he talked about virtual assistance. We're going to break each one of these down to you guys right here in this segment, so stay tuned. Uh, right. But, Charles, these, these are game changers. I mean, if somebody learns the basics <clears throat> of SEO, and as a result, they're now ranking on page one of Google for 
you know, the search term, we buy houses or sell your house, Harrisburg, PA, or if they're ranking uh, invest in real estate in Harrisburg, PA, that could be a great SEO tool for a wholesaler. But talk to us about what SEO is, first of all, and what the power behind it is all about. Sure. SEO is nothing more than to be able to be found doing an organic search by your customer. For example, nine times out of ten, when you hand that customer a business card, the first thing they're going to do is try to look you up online. They're going to either look up your business based on that information on your business, or they're going to look up your industry, such as we buy houses, people, sell my house fast, people, and so on. And when you're found on that first page of an organic search, meaning someone put in a keyword phrase into Google, when your website or your web property is found, that's what's called a web optimization based off of search engine optimization or a search result. That's huge. And the reason why I want to tell you that, and here's the reason why. When a person does a search to look to do business with, the first thing they think about is keywords. Though it may not be a conscious thought of a keyword, the keyword is nothing more than a short phrase that's used to describe what the person wants to do or buy. For example, if the person wants to buy houses or sell a house, they'll do a keyword search for we buy houses people or sell my house fast companies and so on. If your business shows up on that first page of Google, and the reason why I'm going to use Google as the example, because 90% of all the traffic online from search engine optimization is coming from Google, because it's the most popular search engine system out there. So I'm going to use Google as the main example. But if your business shows up on that first page of Google for those keyword phrases that your customers are looking for, that's guaranteed money in the bank. Right now, we're working in five different states based off of what we're talking about, search engine optimization. I'm going to give you one example, and it's not going to be from my company, because I can easily give you the guys examples of my company. This is one of the persons that we work with named Brittany Bowling. Brittany is a stay-at-home mom. Brittany, right now, her whole business is run off of search engine optimization of her website to the tune of and this is, this, is, this is information that is absolutely can be easily verified to the tune of $30,000 a month in the last three months just from her website getting leads online. Wow. Wow. So, and I wanted everyone to hear what he said. Google is responsible for the majority of, of Internet traffic out there. So if you're going to start an SEO campaign – just start where you're going to get the most results, which is Google. Don't worry about Yahoo or Bing or any of that for now. Just perfect Google and everything else will fall into place. Um, so, and, and guys, if you want another example, you know, I kind of accidentally did this over the years. I have never been a master at SEO. But if you just Google invest in real estate, Harrisburg, PA, somehow, miraculously, I am like seven of the 10 results that come up, uh, which I found absolutely shocking. I'm either really good, which is not the case, or no one else in Harrisburg is doing much of, of anything when it comes to SEO. Uh, but I know it's, a, it's extremely competitive in some of the bigger cities. So Charles, can you tell us, can you give us just, you know, maybe a couple of steps that would allow sure. somebody to start down the road of optimizing their website? And you said something that I found so profound. You didn't refer to the website as a website. You referred to it as a web property. So you're really categorizing or classifying these websites as assets. Absolutely. And that's what we're referring to when we're talking about search engine optimization and search engine marketing is because that's what they are. Think about this. And this is a, this is a number that is just going to be mind-blowing. Eighty-five percent of all the business that is gathered from a search result, meaning the first 10 search results that comes on the page when a person do assault. 85% of all the business is given to the first three results. Wow. So if you're among that first three results, which is where Brittany is at, which is where my company is at, so on, you're going to get 85% of the business that people are looking to do business with when they do a search, that's huge. That's and that's powerful. why I say that if you can conquer that tool, if you can conquer that strategy, 
That's one of the main ways in which your bank account can double and triple. Now, you ask me a simple question. Name one way in which you can get that done. Well, I haven't spent uh, a fortune trying to do it. There's a great plugin out there named Jack that's called Yoast SEO. And it's, and it's a free... Pronounce that. Name. Spell that for us. Sure. It's Y-O-A-S-T. Y-O-A-S-T dot com. Yes, Yoast SEO plugin. They have a free version and they have a paid version. What the Yoast SEO plugin does for your website is it tells you what you need to do to make your website search engine optimized compliant. So in other words, you don't have to have a college degree in SEO. You don't have to spend $40,000 working with an SEO expert. You can basically install this plugin on your website and it will tell you Hey, you need to add more keywords on your home page. Hey, you need to add this phrase in your title. Hey, you need to add this phrase in your tag, in your meta tag. And once you do that, you'll get a green score that comes up and say optimize. Or you'll get a failing color that is yellow or red that says this is what you need to do. So it really walks you through baby steps and what you need to do to optimize your website. And I think that's the first step that you should understand when it comes to getting on that first page. And that tool is a great free tool that you can use to get you moving. That is awesome. Great, great content. Again, friends, that is Yoast, Y-O-A-S-T, SEO plugin.com, Yoast SEO plugin.com. Charles, great information. Friends, you're listening to Zach Weiss. The show is Creating Wealth Through Real Estate. We're on WHP 580, and we'll be right back. Okay, welcome back, Central PA. You are listening to Creating Wealth Through Real Estate, and I am your host, Zach Weiss. Uh, the station is WHP 580, and I thank them for giving me the opportunity to host this show and bring you this information that I think is, is really needed in this economy. People are looking at the market and saying, gosh, it's, it's grossly overpriced. Uh, people have lost confidence in the stock market over the last 10 years. There's been major market crashes that have wreaked havoc on people's financial livelihood. And there's a lot of people locally and nationally who are gravitating towards real estate, whether you're going to fix and flip it, whether you're going to wholesale it, whether you're going to, like me, my passion is buy and hold, uh, building quality portfolios of well-located cash-flowing real estate, uh, I know that was a mouthful, but all of that is actually possible if you do this business the right way. And uh, we're talking today with a guy doing all of this. He just happens to be doing it a little further away from us, a little down south, 70 miles from us down south, uh, Baltimore, D.C. area. And his name is Charles Blair. And before we left, we were talking about one of the most important components of a marketing campaign campaign in today's world, and that is an SEO campaign, search engine optimization. And Charles gave everybody some really great resources on how to begin optimizing their, as he calls it, web properties. And I think that's uh, an important term to write down because your websites are exactly that. They're like cash flowing properties and they're assets that if you set these things up right, they can bring you money automatically either via seller leads or buyer leads or a variety of things. And it's all automated. And so the next thing I want to talk about, Charles, is is one thing that you mentioned earlier, and that is direct mail. Uh, yeah. I've been a fan of direct mail since the day I got into this business. I've mailed hundreds of thousands, if not millions, of postcards and letters and all types of other stuff. And I know that direct mail has really changed. You know, 10 years ago, it was, gosh, I hate to say it, it was almost easy. Nowadays, there's a lot more competition. So what is happening in the world of direct mail? I think one of the biggest, um, what I could call the gravitational pulls in direct mail is that now, and just like you just mentioned, Zach, 10 years ago, you would send out a mail campaign to, a, let's say, absentee owners, which I like to call a one-layer deep campaign. And the why I call it a one-layer deep campaign, because you're just sending it out to absentee owners. You're not really doing any what I like to call two- or three-layer deep targeting. You would get results because not everyone was doing these campaigns, and there was but, but so many different list sources or list brokers out there that were selling you these types of campaigns. Now, fast forward 2013, 14, and 15, everyone and their mother is out there selling the strategies of using direct mail, but 
you're going in a different direction. Now there's no longer a one-layer level. You're going two and three layers deep, and the results of which are, are, are bearing those type of fruits. And what I mean by that, instead of sending out a direct mail campaign to an absentee owner, you may send out a direct mail campaign to an absentee owner that has equity in their property that's in a specific zip code that has a, what you would call a uh, credit or, or blemish with their credit card purchasing habits. So you're taking that normal segmentation that was the norm five years ago, and you're basically supersizing it and going three and four layer deep to the targeting aspect of direct mail and getting enormous, enormous results. So let's break this down, Charles. I think what you just said for everyone listening is we're talking about laser targeting a specific demographic that we can talk specifically to. So, Charles, would you agree it's a lot better to send a message that's going to speak directly to that recipient, such as if if we were mailing people who owned multifamily apartment buildings in zip code 17102, if we had a headline, do you own a multifamily apartment building in zip code 17102, that's going to resonate a lot better than if our headline just says, do you own a multi-unit? Um, Absolutely. And so we're laser targeting guys. And what Charles said is go a couple of layers deep. Don't just be satisfied with absentee owners. Look for absentee owners with credit issues because the level of motivation for that person is going to be higher than somebody that does not have them. And then if you also throw in there, Zach, absentee owners with credit issues that also have equity in their property. Nice. That's the key because one of the reasons that most new and should I say beginner investors get frustrated is because they try to throw things at the wall that have no chance of sticking. When you're trying to buy a deal where there's no deal, it can e- you can easily be frustrated in this business. And the first thing that comes out of that new investor mouth is this. Real estate don't work. work. No. <laughs> exactly. Estate, it's not that real estate don't work. It's just that what you use as your bait was, was based off of old principles, old strategies that is just not up to date as to what's working now. So, Charles, for somebody out there listening with a limited marketing budget, uh, I know you can do this manually and send out you know, one a day yourself. Mm-hmm. But if you wanted to embrace automation and, and delegate this task, how much can somebody expect to pay? Let's say they had $500. How much, what could they do with $500 in, in a direct mail campaign? So a five hundred dollars in a direct mail campaign can buy you a targeted list. One of the things you have to realize when you're doing direct mail, the more targeted the list, the higher the cost of the list is going to cost you. Interesting. The question is, can I get that list pulled myself or can I have that list pulled by way of a service? My my best my best market one of my best marketing strategies that we're doing right now is expired listings. So take that five hundred dollars and go through expired listings. And here's one of the marketing campaigns that we have a lot of success with. We use an expired listing list that's pulled from a real estate agent or real estate broker who's pulling expired listings to property that had expired on the market that was at least 90 days. One key factor, 90 days expired and no longer have been listed. Second key factor, the property has equity. Third key factor, the property is in an area of growth and where people are buying uh, first-time home buyers. Fourth key factor, the person is in a situation where they need to sell based on the actual original listing and the property hasn't been relisted. So we're going all the way deep down, and all I've done so far was to get an agent on my side to pull that list without having to buy a list from a list broker. Next, the only other cost I have is my stamp and my envelope and the time it takes me to send out that target laser list to that person. And that's an easy way in which you can take $500 going after deals where you know if you get a yes, there's equity. If you get a yes, there's a possibility for a deal. If you get a yes, you're not wasting your time. That's what I would do with $500 if I had it today. Go after my expired listings where I know there's equity, where I know the property is out there, and where I know it's in an area where first-time home buyers are buying. I think that's great advice. And Charles, I just want you to confirm, you know, people hear me every week on this show and they they may believe everything I say or believe none of it. But I want to hear I want them to hear it from somebody else. What is actually possible when doing direct mail, when you have followed up with good negotiation and, and other follow up processes. But 
you could easily take a $500 marketing budget, send out, I don't know, somewhere between 500 and 1,000 direct mail pieces if you were going to have someone else do it for you. But right. you could bring those leads in and very easily, realistically generate maybe 10 times on your investment, 20 times on your investment. I don't think it would be out of line to send a $500 worth of direct mailings to get a deal that netted you five thousand or ten thousand dollars, do you see do you see that being a realistic expectation if you're mailing the right list? Uh, absolutely, you just hit the key word in the whole process: mailing to the right list. In fact, I've done testing because everything I do, Zach, is based off of split tests and testing of the market and testing of the marketing strategies. So one of the things that we've we've discovered in my company that for every one thousand positive mail pieces that are going out to a targeted list. You can expect anywhere between one and three point five deals. Okay. I'm gonna say that again. For every one thousand pieces going out to a targeted list, you should be getting between one and three point five deals. Very interesting. So guys, right there, I mean you know if you want to do one deal, use that math, go ahead, get the right list. And he gave you some ideas. Charles is talking about mailing expired listings. When he says expired listings, these are properties that were listed with a real estate agent that never sold, the contract expired, they're now like free agents out there. These properties are up for the taking, and uh, it's up to us to go after them, find them, negotiate them, get them under contract, and then monetize these deals. Because it's not just you know about getting the co house under contract. you got to figure out a way to turn that into cash profit, whether you're wholesaling, renting, uh, lease optioning, uh, d you know, doing deals subject to whatever it is. At the end of the day, you got to figure out how to turn a profit out of those deals. Friends, when we come back, we're going to finalize this talk today with how to embrace virtual assistants. And when you hear what Charles has to say, I think you're going to be very interested in at least exploring that option. You're listening to Creating Wealth Through Real Estate. I'm your host, Zach Wiest, and we'll be right back. Okay, Central Pennsylvania, we are back. The show is Creating Wealth Through Real Estate, and I'm your host, Zach Wiest. I just wanted to remind everybody before we conclude the show today, uh, we've got one segment left with Charles Blair. Um, we're going to talk about how to work with virtual assistants, really how to how to create a, an army of employees without all of the headaches and hassles that employees entail. Uh, but before we do so, I just want to remind everybody we did put together a special report for all of the listeners of this show. If you're out there driving in your car at home listening to the radio, or if you're one of our faithful listeners that tune in every week for that, I thank you. Uh, we want to give you something back. We really... Uh, you know, we provide this information, but our goal is for you to actually act upon it and make this business happen for yourself, your wife, your family, and leave a legacy for your children. Uh, so we put together some information. You can download it totally free at padealsradio.com. That's padealsradio.com. And it is jam-packed with relevant data pertaining to the central PA marketplace. This is not what's working in San Diego or Chicago. This is what's working in central Pennsylvania. If you have any interest in investing in real estate, please download your copy today. It is at padealsradio.com. That is padealsradio.com. Okay, Charles, you alluded to the fact uh, a few segments ago that virtual assistance was essentially a game changer for today's real estate investing landscape. And can you tell us, first of all, what is a virtual assistant and how do we use them to make money in real estate? Sure. In fact, the advent of using virtual assistants really exploded with this one book called The 4-Hour Workweek. Um, and when that first book came out by Tim Ferriss years ago, I totally embraced that concept of multiplying myself without multiplying my effort. And that's what being or using and working with virtual assistants is always about. Is about. I believe you as the owner of that business, as the breadwinner of that business, should concentrate, most importantly, on the thing that's going to make you the most money. And if you don't have the expertise on that thing, that's where you need to bring in the people to do that work for you, to do that thing. Whether it's negotiating, whether it's marketing, whether it's setting up the systems and so on. Me, For me and my business, my strength and my biggest strength has always been my business ability to negotiate. So what I want to do is try to figure out how can I take away the stuff that wastes my time and concentrate on the stuff that's going to make me the most money. 
And that's where virtual assistance comes into play. There's a number of companies out there that can actually work with you for whether you're at a new level or an experience level that has a lot of safeguards in place. I'll give you an example. A couple of companies that we worked with in the past before I hired my own virtual assistants is a company called Odesk. That's O-D-E-S-K dot com. Another great one is something called datafreelancer.com. And then a third one is something called Fiverr. All of them have different expertise levels for virtual assistants, but they all pretty much do the same thing. It allows you to replace yourself from that task that takes so much time and concentrate on the task that's going to make you and your business the most money. So, Charles, what are we talking here? I mean, we're essentially talking about hiring an assistant, but not somebody that's going to come to our house every day. They're virtual. They're in their own house or they're in their own office in some other part of the country or the world. Uh, what, do, what does a virtual assistant cost on average in today's marketplace? You can get a virtual assistant to do minor work for you, such as search engine optimization and design, for as little as $2.50 an hour. Wow. The highest I've paid for a virtual assistant is $15 an hour. Okay. But on most cases, you're talking between 2 and $5 an hour for quality college graduate professionals from all around the world. And are these Amer- are these U.S. based virtual assistants? Are these going to be international? What what can we expect for? Let's say our budget was I don't know seven to ten dollars an hour. Yeah, you're talking about someone that has extensive knowledge at a what you call a bachelor's or master's degree level from a high level university in um in in India or in the Philippines where they have great language skills when it comes to speaking English, but also has the concept and the knowledge for the task that you need done. Gotcha, gotcha. Guys, I would uh, strongly encourage you, if you have tasks out there that are just dragging you down, that are not allowing you to earn the highest potential dollar for every minute you're working, if they're just mundane tasks, look at a VA to delegate. Get that stuff out of your life. You know, you shouldn't be licking envelopes pesos, or, or sending direct mails yourself unless you are absolutely crippled by a budget. If you've got a little bit of money to spend, embrace virtual assistance. They'll change your life. Well, Charles, I think this information was absolutely terrific today. It was maybe, you know, a little more technologically advanced than some of our listeners are. But like I said, if, you, if we lost you today... Go to Google, search what we talked about. It'll come up very quickly, and you'll be able to understand better what we have been talking about. And it's all very, very important. And, Charles, for the people that have stuck with us through the whole show, we're coming to the end of the show. Uh, Can you share with them maybe just a quick closing and any free information you have that can help them become better investors? Sure. I'm going to share with them one of my favorite online strategies. I'm going to give them one of my best resources that I have available to give them. One of my favorite online strategies is a strategy I like to call my Craig List Reply Strategy. And this is a strategy that anyone can do, whether or not they're a, using a virtual assistant or not. But the way this strategy would work, most and everybody knows that Craigslist has recently slapped most marketers. What I mean by that, you can no longer put in HTML ads. You have to have your text ads with your actual images and so on. What this strategy allows you to do, instead of you marketing to individuals through the normal way in which you would try to do it, you can send a reply by way of what's called Slidal. Slidal is an app or an online service that allows you to call a seller and leave a message on their phone, and it goes straight to their voicemail without their phone even ringing. So now you can get over that curve of what if I do a cold call and just basically go straight to the seller and say, hey, I saw your ad on Craigslist. If you're interested in selling, give me a call. I'm willing to buy that property. And now you're going to get targeted people calling you as opposed to you cold calling because your message went straight to their voicemail. And, not, and here's the key part. That strategy will allow you to legitimize, legitimize your business because now you're not sending an email where it could be a scam. They actually got a live voice. Nice. We've got a lot of success using that strategy. And I think that's going to be one of the key strategies moving forward that any one of you guys can implement to, ma- to maximize Craigslist. Now, as my free bonus, I just wrote a book about four months ago. It's called One Step Closer to More. It's called From Clicks to Cash Flow. I'm going to give this to everybody on the call. All you would have to do is go to my website, 
realdealmeetup.com, and you'll see the little image there that allows you to get my free download of my book. It's over 100 pages of my five top bulletproof marketing strategies that you can do online. So, friends, just as a, as a reminder here, that is realdealmeetup.com, realdealmeetup.com. Guys, If I, I know I'm, as soon as we're done finishing this show, I am going to go download my copy, and I'll have it read, Charles, by Sunday night, guaranteed. Uh, and I'll probably be calling you with tons of questions, but I encourage you guys to do the same thing. Uh, take Charles up on his offer. It couldn't be any more affordable than free. Uh, and it's pi- <laughs> it's filled with content that, I mean, the, the content you delivered on today's show, Charles, if there's any, if the book is anything close to what you delivered today, then it'll be well worth the read. So realdealmeetup.com, friends. Check out Charles's book. I'm sure it'll help you in your real estate investing endeavors. Charles, I can't thank you enough, man. Terrific information. I appreciate your support. I appreciate you spending this time with us today. We'll talk real soon and uh, just appreciate it. Friends, for everyone listening out there, I appreciate your support with the show. Thanks for listening. Every week we'll be back next Saturday, 4 p.m. Hope to hear see you then. Take care.